Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us on another episode of Calvary Conversations. Like always, my name is Mariah Roders, and I'm here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan Roders. What's up, guys? Hey, how you guys doing? Good. We're doing yeah. well. So today we have a special episode. It's just going to be Morgan and I, brother and sister duo, and we are going to be talking about salvation and stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we are. So Morgan, would you like to pray for us? Yeah, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for this day and for this time. I know um, when it's airing, it's probably nighttime, but thank you for meeting us here. And we just pray um, as we talk, as we talk about, like I said, salvation <laughs> and stuff, that we would really um, be serious about it because it is a serious matter. There's people going to hell, and without you, we are all going to hell. And so I pray, Father, that that won't be our message just to make people fear to to love you that's not the that's not the point but i pray father that we would see that we are in such need of a savior and you aren't just someone to save us but you're also a father and so i thank you god that you love us thank you that you care for us thank you that it's your will that none may perish and so i just pray father that you put a passion within us to love those around us and love strangers even our enemies, God. I pray that, um, I think the the guy from Salvation Army, he said that he said he prayed for all the people under him to hang over hell to see just their, that, that they wouldn't even want their worst enemy to go to hell. And so I just pray, Father, that we would have those hearts for people, that we would long for people to have a relationship with you. And so I just pray that you would teach us how to uh, cultivate that relationship. And we know it's not in our own strength, but we do still have to partner. There's a balance. And so we just pray, Father, that as we talk about these things today, that you be with us, that you be guiding us, that you be leading us, Father. And thank you for everyone that's tuning in. Please bless them and refresh them. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I say, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. And mm -hmm. so now we're, are we going to talk mm -hmm. about cost of discipleship? Yep. Luke 14, verses 25 through 35. Um, I don't know if I'm going to read the whole thing. It's kind of long, but I'll, I'll start in verse mm -hmm. 25. Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciples. Verse 28. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the costs, mm. whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build it and it was not finished. So, and then it explains more, but... Think about it. There's so many people, right? They fall away. They accept it, right? They think they say the prayer, but then you see them fall back and go back into the world. And it's people are like, they just want savior. <laughs> exactly. They just want Amen. a get out of hell free card. Yep. But God is much more than that. He, he doesn't, it's not just, Hey, yeah, just get out of hell, but he mm. wants a relationship with Amen. us. And we should be so excited about that. Sometimes we're excited about heaven. But really, heaven is that relationship with Jesus. Yep. I, I think that's even greater than, you know, how people say, oh, the mansions and stuff. Uh, you, you, we don't even know what that mansion is going to look like or what that's going to mean. But that relationship with the Father, it, just like Jesus, that separation, when he died for us, it wasn't just the sins. Sometimes people think, oh, just the sin on him or the the beatings or the nails in his hands, that was painful. But the most painful thing most people think or believe is that separation from the Father because he had never been separated from the Father. And so if that relationship is so important to Jesus and that's the that's the best thing, then we should be so thankful for that relationship. We shouldn't just be looking uh, to Christianity or as just a religion or just to be free from hell. Mm -hmm. But we should just desire that that relationship with God. And I think if when we truly love God for th him, you know, for himself, not just for heaven or getting out of hell, then that will allow us to really count the cost and see that it's worth it. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen. And then the next verse that 
Um, actually, I'm going to have you read this, Morgan. First John 3, 7 through 10. Do you have that? Yeah. A little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Yep. Verse 9. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's uh, God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Verse 10. But this, by this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, um, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So you notice it says a practice of sinning. Yep. And like I said before, we're even in Christ, we still sin. We're still sinners. But think about that in your life. Is it a practice of sinning? Is it blatant sin? Are you, is it, some people say, oh, I'm struggling. But sometimes when they say that, they're not really struggling. They're just full on giving into it. Yeah. But if you're, if it's a struggle, you should be fighting it, right? You should be giving it to God and, and getting accountability and everything like that, because you don't want that to separate you, right? See, it says nothing can separate us from God, but we can choose to be separate from God in the sense that we choose our sin over him. So, Amen. And then another verse that I really like, um, well, verses, is 1 Corinthians 6, where it talks about, um, like, different sins and stuff. Because I think a lot of times people are confused, like, wait, but what things am I not supposed to walk in? Like, I understand. And that's mm -hmm. why we're going to encourage you to read your Bible. But, um, mm -hmm. but also going with what you're saying is, like, to not make a practice of sinning. So it says, 1 Corinthians Six, and we're going to start in nine. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, right? Because a lot of times we're deceived thinking, oh, I'm a good person. I'm not that bad, but we're all wicked. It mm -hmm. says neither the sexual, sexually immoral. So if se the sexually immoral, a lot of times people don't realize fornicators. So if you are living with your boyfriend or girlfriend and sleeping with them and having sex or like if it talks about in second timothy 222 doing anything that arouses love before it's time or anything that you know like that that you feel like oh i don't feel like this is good I, you know you wouldn't do that at church that that you a lot of times there's like sexual immorality that people are like well how far is too far and all this stuff and the mm -hmm. fact that you're asking that you've already gone too mm -hmm. far <laughs> like yeah. you need to be as close to god and being you pure and holy try to push the boundaries yeah. or we'll try have, to get I'm, as close to sin as you can yeah we'll do another episode on that talking about mm -hmm. purity and what it what does it mean to like you know just getting accountability and help too because you know, it isn't easy in this life but we're going to talk about that and that's why it's important to go to church and get accountability but sexually immoral nor idolaters What's an idolater, Morgan? I always say that mm. wrong, but... Idolater, yeah. So when we put anything before God, mm, anything. an idol, right? Yep. And it's not just like a, a, a graven image. Yeah, that's an that could be an idol if you're putting that before God. But we're like, hey, I don't have any idols in my ho house. You know, I don't worship my this plant or anything like that, right? But we do put idols, and it could be anything before family God. Family members, even, like Luke 14. Even good things, yeah. yeah. Family members even. Um, our pastor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this podcast, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, but if we put anything before God, and usually it's sin, right? It's our, um, like Mariah was saying, uh, maybe fornication. Maybe you're putting yeah. that before God. And the reason why you might be putting that, or you are putting that before God, if you're struggling with that, if you're in that, or blatantly in that, it's because God says not to do that. Mm -hmm. So you are putting that, that fornication, that sin before God. So that's an idol, right? Yeah, and it talks about that later. If you read the whole, I encourage you to read the whole chapter in 1 Corinthians 6. It talks about like you're joining yourself with Christ and you know mm -hmm. all that. But um, I'll go through it a little faster, but nor idol uh, <laughs> adulterers, so the people who like, you know, cheat on their husband mm -hmm. or wife or that, nor men who practice homosexuality, men or women, men or women, you know, homosexuals like whether you women with women men with men that mm -hmm. is wrong that and a lot of times people say oh well jesus doesn't say it and all this stuff okay everything that's in the word of god is from god and so 
to say that, oh, I don't pick, I pick and choose, then you need to take out everything. You need to take out mm-hmm. salvation, salvation, mm-hmm. salvation too. So they're just letting you know, like, homosexuality is a hard one for people to understand because they're like, oh, like, let them love who they want to. And it's like, but no, even if it's not bad that that is bad and, you know, it also isn't right, you know, it isn't, it, you know, you get even sexual transmitted diseases and mm-hmm. all these things from fornication and homosexuality and God's not doing that to like have us not have fun. He's doing that. Protect us. He loves us. He knows what's best for us and we need to trust him. And, and, and I, yeah. it's wild. I just, I just heard this this week. Um, some people are like, well, homosexuals, that's not really in the Bible. They're like, Oh, that, that word came later, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if that word came later or, or when it came. The fact is that God says, what, in the Old Testament, a man should not sleep with a man. Amen. And, Amen. and Roman, look if you look at Romans 1, it doesn't say homosexuals, but it says, For this reason God gave them up to dishonorable passions. Mm. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And this is, uh, this is 126. And then 27, and men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. So we say this because we don't want people to continue in this because this, these things, our sin is not, is not going to allow us. If we continue blatantly in those things, then we are not of our Father God. Or of, you know, if you're in that, you're of your father, the devil, right? You're following in your flesh. And people think, hey, no, I'm not following the devil. I'm following my flesh. The kingdom of self is the kingdom of Satan because he, it, he loves self. That's why he fell, right? Because he wanted to be greater than God. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the next one says, uh, verse 10, nor thieves. And so you might think, well, I'm not like robbing banks. But there's other times where we scam, you know, people, Mm -hmm. um, they take like movies they shouldn't like, um, and do different things of like taking something that's not theirs or coveting. Doesn't matter how small. Like even if you're coveting something your neighbor has, like that is wrong too. Um, nor the greedy. So many people are greedy. We always Mm -hmm. like, I wish I had this and comparing yourself to others. Oh, if only I had this, then my life would be better. Greediness, drunkards. That's a big one. A lot of times people are like. Well, I can drink, but it says, I think it says it later too in verse 12, all things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. Not saying that you can't drink, but a lot of times that like the biggest stat that ruins marriages and families is alcohol abuse. And so just being Mm -hmm. careful that, you know, you're not like, oh, I just feel a little buzz. Is that wrong? Is that too far? Like, don't like, just try to stay away from that because drunkards, you know, if if you keep practicing that. Mm-hmm. Cut it off. Cut right? it off. Yeah. So if you're, you're if you're like, oh, yeah. I might not get drunk. Yeah. No. Then yeah. don't do it. Right. Yeah. We're not supposed. It's crazy because we ask God to um, lead us far from temptation, but then we <laughs> dive into we it. We pur- purposely put ourselves in a bar around all this stuff. Go to you know. And yeah. And so we need to make sure that we're doing our part because God's not gonna, you know, just force us from the things that we want to do. He gives us free will, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next one is, um, nor revilers, nor swindlers. So revilers, um, right, Morgan, is that people who are just get really angry and like, um, Mm. can you explain the definition? Like a reviler, someone who's like, I think they just are very, um, criticized in an abuse or angrily insulting manner. So someone who reviles and it's like, I think it's also people who just like lose their temper and get mm. angry all the time. Well, you like think just of the Bible talks about how the, the how foothold. anger gives a mighty foothold to the enemy, right? And and we th- try to think. You know, the Bible also says anger doesn't satisfy. You know the I think the righteousness of God or something. Sometimes we think, hey, we can get vindication or we can do these things. But sometimes, most of the time, we need to leave that up to God. And that's going to, we can't take justice into our own hands. So we need to be careful. Sometimes I've seen people say, hey, it's a righteous anger. And, but really, they're just saying that so that they can choose to be angry. And mm-hmm. so we need to be careful of that. 
And this also says a reviler is a person who uses words to damage, control, insult someone's character or reputation. Mm, so like a slander. way of it is slander, yeah. right? A lot of people are like, oh, I don't like I'm I'm just like I'm not gossiping because, you know, I'm just saying the truth. But if you're doing something to ruin someone's reputation to make them look mm-hmm. bad, that's slander. So reviling. So there you go. Nor swindlers. So I think that's with money. Right, Morgan? That's mm-hmm. um, someone. It says. Use deception to deprive someone of money or possessions, um, fraudulent. So mm. deceptive, like deceitful people, like who scam people who are scamming people uh, for money and cheating people will not look at what it says will not inherit the kingdom of God. So mm-hmm. we just look at like a lot of people like the church only looks at homosexuality and only pick on that. Well, we bring that up because that's one that's praised. A lot of people don't praise people for being adulterer or praise people for fornicating. Um, kind of nowadays they do, but homosexuality is praised. Like you can be a homosexual Christian. That's wrong. So we're not like making it worse than these. All these, it says all these sins, like if you're blatantly walking in, like I don't care, this isn't wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, not inherit the kingdom of God. There's a whoops, there's a slip, there's a fall and confess and get right with God falling forward. But when you keep falling back and back and you're just lukewarm, like I go to church, but then I party hard on the weekends and I confess. It says in Revelation, it says you're either hot or cold. Like if you are lukewarm, he'll spit you out. So I'd rather you guys go back to the world and party hard and realize this world has nothing to offer you so that you are thankful for Christ and what he's done on the cross. You are thankful for him dying for your sins. You realize that this world has nothing to offer you, even though you think love is love and it feels good. Feelings are wrong. Feelings bring people to death, Mm -hmm. but this is why we need faith. And this is why we keep talking about that without faith. It's impossible to please God. I think it's Hebrews. Is it 11, six or six, 11, 11, six, one. Oh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so how important that faith is in Christ, not faith in a person, not if you are single, not faith. if Oh, if I get married, then my life will be good. Or, oh, if I went to these parties, if my parents let me go and if I didn't miss out, then my life would be good. And that fear of missing out, like we talked about in episode 38, it's wrong. We're not missing out. We get to be in eternity and have a party in heaven and a banquet with God forever. Well, there's no more pain, no more sin, death, anything like that, sorrow. And we get to like, like love God and love everyone around us. There's no marriage. So that's, people are all sad about it. It's beautiful. We all mm-hmm. get to love each other. We all get to. that means like the, our relationships with one another and so with good, God yeah. is so great Amen. that it even Amazing. surpasses marriage. And yeah, some people are in tough, tough relationships. Mm-hmm. But it's gonna be surpass even the best marriage here on earth. Amen. So Amen. that's that's the way we gotta think about it. And like I said, our brains can't wrap our we can't wrap our minds <laughs> around that. But it's going to be great. Amen. And then this is the last verse, and we have this on our wall at our church, like on the thing in the sanctuary. And this is First Corinthians six eleven. And such were some of you. But you were washed, Hmm. you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So because of God the Father sending his Son, Jesus dying on the cross, and now we walk it out. Because Jesus died, he gave us the Holy Spirit. We can walk it out now with the power of the Holy Spirit. So so many times people are like, but it's so hard to like not do this and give in. Yeah, in your own strength, it is impossible. It is impossible to not keep walking in that. But this is why I love Galatians 5, 16. It says, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And it says such were some of you. You used to be a homosexual. You used to be an adulterer. You used to be a fornicator. You used to be a swindler or a violer, all these things. But you've been washed. You've been justified. And it's not saying you're not going to slip and go back to that. But you're falling forward at the feet of Christ. Mm -hmm. You're humbling yourself. You're admitting you need help. And you're admitting you need accountability too. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that now. And what happened when when Jesus mm -hmm. died and rose again? Yeah, he ascended into heaven, but he gave us the Holy Spirit. So that's also a great thing. Because if you're his disciple and you're like, what, Jesus, you're leaving? Mm -hmm. Like that would be devastating. But he says there's going to be... He's going to give us a helper. He's yep. going to give us something better because it's it's him basically, but now he he's in everyone's mm-hmm. hearts, right? Yeah. In everyone who believes. And so we need to make sure that we are walking with the Holy Spirit daily that 
like the verse you always talk about, Psalm 139. Mm -hmm. We're asking God to search us, Amen. the Holy Spirit, to search our hearts and to know us, to test us, see if there's any wicked way within us, because there are wicked ways. Yep. And even sometimes there's things, like I said earlier, things that we don't even see, different areas of pride, self-righteousness, and we need to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal those things Amen. to us. Because those things, our pride will kill us if yeah. we let it. Yeah. Because if we walk in this life in our own strength, a lot of times people don't believe in like hearing the voice of God. What does that mean? Read your word. Like your word. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Read the Bible, the yeah. word of God. Read the Bible because the Bible has all the answers. All the, mm -hmm. It says uh, Ronald Reagan, he has this quote. Ali Bustek, he has it in his studio. It says, all the problems men face are in the covers of the Bible. So... Mm -hmm. The word of God gives us all the answers to the problems you face and it encourages us. So if you ever feel lonely or depressed, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. I'm with you always, even to the ends of the earth. And it says like, um, he is for us, not against us. He's given us a purpose and a, a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. And if you seek me, you will find me when you search me with what? all your heart mm -hmm. if you draw near to me i'll draw near to you like there's so many beautiful promises that we just miss out on because we don't read the word of god and mm -hmm. we just kind of like do our own thing and this is why matthew 7 right the typical depart from me i never knew you people get really afraid they're like oh my goodness am i gonna go to hell like am i not really saved this is talking about religious people who think they're saved right those people who say didn't i do this all these good works mm -hmm. but don't just slow down, right? Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I'm God and let God speak to them. Like Morgan said, Psalm 139, 23 and 24, search me, O God, know my heart, test me, know my anxious thoughts, right? No one's anxious nowadays. Everyone yeah. struggles with that. Know my anxious thoughts, see if there's any wicked way within me. Am I doing anything big or small? If, I, if I'm just, even if I'm speeding and God's like, I don't want you to go over the speed limit, be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Know my heart, test me, know my anxious thoughts, wicked ways, see if there's any wicked way within me and then lead me right on the way of everlasting life. It's mm -hmm. a walk with him. It's a John mm -hmm. 15, we're going to talk about, it's a continual abiding by the spirit, walking yeah. by the spirit, talking to him. I love that song. It's like, he walks with me. He talks with me a long life's merry mm -hmm. way. It's an adventure. It's joyful. It's joyous when we get to walk by the spirit. So um, I'm just going to, or you can read 15, that first. Yeah. Yes, read that. Uh, John 15, 5. Um, there's a big portion of John 15 that's really good, but for time, I'll just read verse 5. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Amen. And who's talking here? Jesus, right? Yep. And God, you know, he, the Trinity, right? It's Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. Um, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit for apart from me, you can do nothing. So the question is, are you abiding? Amen. And some people are like, what does abide mean? Right. Mm -hmm. But the, are you staying connected to God? Are you in the word of God? Are you praying? And the result of that will be fruit, the fruit of the spirit, which is in Galatians five. Right. So you can look that up. See, am I producing this? And is this coming naturally because I am in God's word. I am in fellowship. I am, you know, praying and seeking him and doing it with a sincere heart. So that's abiding, staying close to him. Amen. Yeah, that's good. I'm just going to read Matthew 7 really quick. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven 22, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do many mighty works in your name? Verse 23, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of mm -hmm. lawlessness. So that is always like a verse like dun, 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 like very scary to people. And it was scary to me because I so many times do things in my own strength, like try to be a good person still in Christ. And I try not to do this, try not to do that, go to church, do all these things instead of just like asking God, God, what do you want me to do today? Mm -hmm. What is your will for my life? Not my will, but your will be done. What do you want me to do? Because so many times if we compare ourselves to others and do what people mm -hmm. tell us to do and fear people, we're trapped, like it says in Proverbs 29, 25. But when we trust God and know that his way is best, whether mm -hmm. or not we're married, whether or not we have the job we think we need, whether or not we ever have kids, mm -hmm. that God is in control. He knows it's best for us. Well, and that's we trust the difference. That. Like, 
think about that. All the other religions, they're just religions. They're yeah. just, what can I do to duty. get to God? Mm-hmm. Yeah, duty. And uh, it's cliche, yeah. People say, oh, it's not a religion. It's a relationship. But that's true. It's yeah. a relationship. Intimacy. If you don't know the Father, if you're not spending time with Him, then your works are going to be unauthorized. Yeah, you you know, mm-hmm. you could read the Bible and say, hey, oh, I all I have to do is be good. I'd be a good person and do these things. Like you can read the th- good things and you can try to uphold the Ten Commandments, but the law shows us that we're sinners mm. and that in our own strength, we can't uphold the Ten Commandments or even the 613 laws. Yep. And that's why we need a relationship with the Father and that's why we need to be listening to his voice. And we need the Holy Spirit to lead us so that we know what to do. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes people do great things, but God hasn't called you to do that. Amen. That's Amen. not God's purpose for your life. And you guys might be shocked. Yeah. And you're like, but I'm doing so much good. How could this not be God's purpose? But the question is, have you really asked him? Yeah. Has he told you to do that? Mm-hmm. Or are you just doing it in your own strength? And that's... That's the difference is that religion is man's attempt to seek God. But a relationship is different than that. And that's what we need. We need a relationship with God. And intimacy, like Mm -hmm. it says, like I think it's the Greek or is it Greek or Hebrew of Uh, gnoskos. So that word no, depart from me, I never knew you. That word no is gnoskos, intimacy, like a man knows his wife, Mm -hmm. like he knows her inside out he knows her that's how much we should know god and want to know him because why would you want to be in eternity i always say this to people with someone you don't even talk to Mm. that you barely know that you just run from and then you spend eternity with them on a honeymoon that's what heaven's gonna be (laughs) that's weird and that's why he says depart from me never knew you like everything you're doing was your flesh and right the kingdom of self is the kingdom of satan but when we're submitted to his well it's like god i know nothing i am weak i am foolish but you, with you, when I abide in you and I just submit to you. And what does this all come down to? All of this is a broken, contrite spirit the Lord will not despise. It's humility. It's um, talking about when it's like uh, James. I'll go there really quick. James 5, mm-hmm. um, 16. Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power and it is working. So... We, this is what we're going to talk about really quickly now is intimacy and relationship with brothers and sisters in Christ. And so this goes back to second Timothy two twenty two, my favorite verse. So flee youthful passions or run from anything that stimulates youthful lust, whether that be masturbation, pornography, any of that flee, run away mm-hmm. from that and pursue righteousness, which is our only righteousness is found in Christ mm-hmm. faith in Christ Jesus and who he is not in ourself love right we can only love god we can only love others with christ's love and if you love me you obey my commandments and peace right we have peace when we've accepted him and the holy spirit's inside of us um it surpasses all understanding so along with those who call on the lord of pure heart so it's telling us that we need community we need commitment we need a church family hebrews 10 25 especially what we're going through nowadays when this world is getting darker and we believe God's coming back soon. 25, let's not neglect meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day of the Lord drawing near. So we see God coming back soon. This world's getting darker. It's going to be more difficult to follow Christ, right? You're going to be persecuted. And it says that with counting the costs, be willing for your family to hate you. Be willing for people to despise you, but you're doing this all for the sake of Christ. It's a joy that you're being persecuted because Jesus is whipped. Watch the passion of Christ. Jesus whipped. He was mocked. He was despised. Mm -hmm. He was rejected by men. Isaiah 53. I encourage you to read that. For all those people out there, (laughs) um, the Jewish people who say like, oh no, like it doesn't talk about that. It literally in Isaiah 53 prophesies Mm -hmm. everything that had happened. And it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So um, that accountability is so important. And so I encourage you to go back to episode 38, where we talk about church commitment with my dad, Morgan and I. And how important that is to pray and ask God, where do you want me to be? If you guys are in Tucson and you don't have a church, we encourage you guys to check out our church, Calvary Valley. Um, But also there's other Bible believing churches. We encourage you to go to a church that, you know, is Bible believing and they 
they believe that the word of God is the word of God. They're not trying to add or take away to it or put in their old things or like the prophet said this or this person said this. They believe that, you know, how important it is to withhold and cherish the word of God and also walk by the spirit. Mm -hmm. But how important it is to be intimate with God alone too. Mm -hmm. So go to church, but also your alone time, your quiet time with God, waking up every morning. This is something I don't really do, but I want to start doing um, Ephesians 6 verse 10, putting on the full armor of God mm -hmm. because you are going to be attacked. It's yeah. not a matter of if you are going to be attacked by the enemy. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Um, it talks about that in Ephesians 6, 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So we're not just fighting against like liberals or leftists or all this. We're fighting against an enemy who wants to steal, kill, mm -hmm. and destroy. He wants to take you to hell. He wants you to follow him. But that's why it's so important to walk by the spirit. And it says, putting on the full armor of God in verse 13, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day mm -hmm. and have done and having done all to stand firm, verse 14, stand therefore having fastened with the belt of truth, right? Which mm -hmm. is the word of God, the belt of truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, the way that we can, you know, be in right standing with God is knowing that we're abiding, you know, we're humbling ourselves. If there's sin that creeps up, we're dealing with it. We're confessing it to people. We're getting accountability and the shoes for your feet, having put the readiness given by the gospel of peace, right? The good news, mm -hmm. sharing that good news, walking it out, making mm -hmm. disciples. Go, therefore, and make disciples, Matthew 28, 19. That's it, our mission it as really a church. it really is a gospel It peace. is, a good news. Like, you think of that, it's, it gives us peace with God. Jesus is our mediator, and now, because apart from him, we are hostile toward God. Yeah. Our sin put, him, put Jesus on the cross, and our sin... You know, we we don't like the light. We try to hide naturally because we want to hide our sin. We want to do what we want to do. But that the peace of God, uh, the peace of the gospel, that's what that is. It gives us peace and restores our relationship with him. So, Amen. I'm just going to finish this and then we're going to pray, pray for you guys. But um, verse 15, the shoes of... Um, the shoes of peace and then 16 in all circumstances take up the shield of faith which can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one which is mm -hmm. satan you know and his demons trying to attack your mind mm -hmm. with darts saying oh does god really love you or oh, are you really saved oh maybe you blaspheme the holy spirit and i'm telling you right now if you're out there a lot of people say oh i may be a blaspheme the holy spirit the fact that you're concerned about that you have it right mm -hmm. the it's those people who harden their hearts who are like no i don't want god no i don't need god i don't need a, i don't need his help i'm a good person rejecting rejecting until god you know he he uh, says okay, okay. Yeah. that you've you've made, made your, your choice. choice and then um 17 this is the part salvation salvation and stuff <laughs> um and take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god not my word right mm -hmm. but the word, of god. the word of god verse 18 and this is what we should do this is how we you know continue to go through this dark world and with all the craziness pray at all times in the spirit and with all prayer and supplication, right? Crying out to God, being intimate. And you don't need like a perfect prayer, like a Catholic prayer. You just need to cry out to him like King David, like, God, I'm nothing. I need help. I don't know what mm -hmm. to do right now. Please help me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be this like, oh, put together, like just be real and honest with God. Mm -hmm. And like King David, he was a man after God's own heart because he cried out to God. And to the to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, all right? Interceding for others. Mm -hmm. Pray for other believers, you know, in other countries, their persecution. Pray for them. And also for me, that the words may be given to me my in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, which is the good news. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, for which I am an ambassador in chains, and I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be persecuted right there. Yeah. He was persecuted, right? And we need to understand that don't ever be afraid of, oh, I thought it was going to be easy being Christian. Everything's going to be good now. Don't be like unaware of his schemes. Mm -hmm. Like he's going to attack you. Your family member might, family might reject you, might not mm -hmm. want you anymore. 
but in how much we love God in comparison of how much we love God, it should seem like we're hating everyone else Mm -hmm. because we love God so much. And the cool thing it also talks about, it's like, um, if you truly count the cost, like think of that because people, they, you might count the cost real quick and be like, Oh, what? I'm going to be persecuted. I'm going to, it might cause problems with my family even and stuff. Then they're like, Oh, I don't want that. But that's, uh, that's not fully counting the cost. That's mm-hmm. just looking at the quick external things like, oh, that's going to cause a little bit of pain. I thought this is a free gift. I thought this was just all good. And yes, it is good, but you need to ca- count the cost of eternity. This life is so short and eternity is eternal. Forever. It's forever. So that is why, yeah, you can count the cost, but I'm telling you right now, it's worth it. Amen. You know, it's, it is. There's nothing that compares to it. And you. this is not something that you want to be like, oh, s- yeah, someone told me about that. But why didn't I choose? Like you're going for eternity. You don't want to be saying, why? Why didn't I choose the right thing? Why did I count the cost and not really count the cost? You know, just look for my selfish interests, like you know, persecution and like the enemy coming against me, but God is much more powerful. You don't have to fear the enemy. You don't have to, yes, he's going to try to come against you, but you have the full armor of God. You have the Holy Spirit. And if God is for you, who can be against you, right? So the devil can't take your salvation or anything like that. And don't feel like you're missing out. Like Morgan is saying, trust me, this world has nothing to offer you. There's so many testimonies and stories of people saying they've tried everything. Just read what it talks about in Ecclesiastes. Solomon, mm-hmm. he tried everything. He had all the riches, all the women, everything. And yet he said it was meaningless. And at the end, those things that he got is re- remember, fear God and obey his commandments. That's mm-hmm. the only thing that matters because this is not our home. And to remind mm-hmm. you, this pain, it's this is the worst it's going to be for the Christian. But for the non-believer, right, this is the best it's going to be. And it's it's not that good. And so <laughs> I would just encourage you, don't ever feel like you're missing out. Don't ever feel like you're, you know, if you have kids and they're like, I feel like I'm missing out. I don't get to do this. And let them know this is not your home. We're living for eternity. Mm-hmm. We're just foreigners passing through. So get excited. And don't believe for, the lie that, oh, I can accept God when I'm mm-mm. older or when, because you could die today. You could yep. die right we now. Don't know right? So that's why today we, is the day. Today, yeah, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. So make sure that if if God is touching your heart right now, and I pray yeah. that He is, Amen. even those of you who have been backslide sliding or just kind of been complacent, that God's calling you to wake up, Amen. and God's calling me to wake up, Amen. right? All and so us. we need to make sure that we're not just playing games with God or have a plan of oh yeah i'll accept you later we need to do it today because we are not guaranteed another day amen so now i'm gonna have morgan he's gonna pray the prayer of salvation and you guys can repeat after him but remember too it's not the words that save you this isn't like oh like the words are gonna save you but it's that faith in christ like it talks about without faith it's impossible to please god and whoever draw nears to god will draw near to God, mm-hmm. must believe that he exists and that he will reward those who earnestly or diligently seek him. So that's our goal is like, this is not just for those people because you might just see this video and like, whatever, this is for people who don't know God. This is for all of us. Me and Morgan are being awakened and encouraged right now to seek God right now and to earnestly seek him that the day mm-hmm. is drawing near. We need to also encourage people. So when Morgan says this prayer, you might be like, oh, it doesn't matter. Maybe God's even calling on your heart to recommit your life. Maybe you feel like a little lukewarm right now and just to recommit your life. And maybe go to a church and, you know, be baptized, that outward expression of an inward faith to have people then hold you accountable. Um, And also pray this prayer so you can also lead others because that's our job. Our main job, we feel like, what am I supposed to do on this world? I don't know my will. I don't, I can't hear the voice of God. Just read the Bible and he tells you to go there and make disciples, pour into others, love others just as Christ loves you. Like go and love others with his love. And so Morgan, do yeah. you want to? Yeah. And you know, I, you know, I don't like having to put the prayer of salvation and put it in a box because sometimes like Mariah said, mm-hmm. People think, oh, I prayed that. It's good. So usually I just pray. And you don't have to, if you're leading someone to Christ, you know, this is a good lesson here too. It doesn't have to be like a rote prayer that you guys read through and you're like, okay, I say this, you say that. I say this, you say that. 
sometimes like I'm going to do right now, I just pray, pray these things. And I ask the person to pray that either out loud or in their heart. And so since we're online, you guys can just pray that out loud or in your heart. I can't hear you, but God can hear you. Amen. And that's what it's about. It's not about someone hearing you. Oh, someone heard me say the prayer. Yes, it's good to it's good to tell people Amen. and it's good to be held accountable, but it's not for them. It's for God. So let's just pray right now and pray this in your heart. Even if you have backslidden or you want to recommit your life to God, uh, just pray this. And then afterward, I'm going to just pray for you to continue in that. Amen. So, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and I need you, Lord, as a savior. I, I just pray, God, that you cleanse me from all of my unrighteousness. I confess, Lord, that that Jesus, you are Lord. You're not just Jesus, but you are our Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that, God, you raised Jesus from the dead. And now we have life in you. And I just pray, Father, um, I just thank you so much for receiving me into your kingdom and that I could be your son and your daughter. And I thank you, Father, just I thank you for all the people who are praying this with me, God. I pray that you would just revive them, that they are were dead in sin, but God, you can give them life. And Lord, we we recognize that this world is going, it's getting worse. We can see that clearly. We can see in your word that the world was bad. Even back when you were on this earth, things so many bad things were happening still because of our sin, because of our flesh. And so, Lord, we just we recognize that we need you, and we just call upon you right now to, to touch our hearts and to help us to walk by the Spirit so that we will not gratify the lust and the desires of the, our flesh, God. And I just pray that you would just encourage people now that they are saved, now that they have a relationship with you, whether they're starting it right now today or whether they've been a Christian for 20, 30, 40 years. God, I thank you that we can continue to walk. We can continue to grow. And I pray, Father, for your sons and daughters to abide in the vine, that if they have been backsliding, if they have uh, been complacent, if they've been doing their own thing, that you just get a hold of their hearts once again, God. I can't, I can't make them but God, you can speak to them. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. All those who have prayed the prayer, all those who are giving their lives to you right now, fill them with your Holy Spirit, God. Empower them to live for you all the days of their life, the rest of their days, months, years here on this earth, however many days they have here. I pray that they would be lived for you and for your kingdom, for your glory, God. And that's why we're here. We're not here for us. We're not here to build our kingdoms. We're here for you, for your glory. Amen. And so we thank you, God. Thank you for this time. I pray that your Holy Spirit would do a mighty work and that you would fill in all the blanks, all the all the things I missed, all the things that Mariah missed, all the things that we just can't cover in this time. God, please speak to them through your word. Speak to them in dreams and visions. Speak to them in their prayer time with you. And I pray, God, that they would have a sincere heart ready to take in everything that you have for them, God. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God bless the Lord. you guys. Well, I'm excited and thankful. If you prayed that prayer in faith, and you meant it, and now you want to walk it out and abide in Christ. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and Amen. it's an amazing day. We are so mm. excited and joyful. And if you are already saved in a Christian walking it, you should be joyful and live a life of joy, being filled mm -hmm. with spirit, because so many times people see us as Christians, like, I don't want to be a Christian, because look at them, they're so depressed. But we <laughs> should be filled with spirit. It's just like in Theo, enthusiastic, mm -hmm. filled with God, filled with joy. And so... I am thankful for you guys. Sometimes if we don't feel good and there's like a hard day, it's okay to be honest. And that's why we have our community and mm -hmm. church so they can pray for you. But to put on that garment of praise, put on some worship music, mm -hmm. praise God, thank him for all he's done for you mm -hmm. and just rejoice and be glad because this is not our home. Our yeah. home's in heaven and, and eternity with him. And that's important too, to what you're saying, 
if you did give your heart to God right now, we're just so thankful Amen. for that. And you need to get involved with the church, Amen. whether that be yep. here at Calvary or Valley or another Bible believing church. You. And make sure that they're they're holding to the word of God. You if you see something in the word of God that's that they're not holding to, you know, you can even reach out to one of us, ask us, mm-hmm. you know, and we're not perfect, I know, but we need to make sure that that we're living by the word of God, that mm-hmm. we're not twisting scripture, that we're doing our best to read it in context. And that if like I was talking about earlier, we need that accountability as well and that encouragement because this life, let's, let's be honest, this life is hard, Amen. but we have God and we have each other Amen. and we have the Holy Spirit. Yes. So, so get involved because the enemy, if you pull away, if you are like, yeah, I gave my my life to Jesus, but if you are just pulling away, the devil wants to pick you off. You know, he just wants to take you away and destroy your life. And so that's why we need to make sure that we're stay, abiding in Christ. And like God's word says too, that we're coming together, coming out from our homes, right? Mm-hmm. Even in the midst of COVID and different things. And that's why we're open. We're open mm-hmm. physically. So yeah. Yep. So anyway, I'm just so thankful that you guys can join us again on another episode of Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. Also, make sure to follow us on Instagram for any of the behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. Please make sure to check out our new merch down in the description below and praying that you guys have a blessed week. Amen.